Hello everyone, today I would like to talk about force flow in structures and how this force flow can be visualized using Karamba 3D. The generation of force flow lines and the example that I will go through is based on a paper by Herbert Moldenhauer, which is called Die Visualisierung des Kraftflusses in Stahlkonstruktionen. The geometry is quite simple, you can see it here. It's a quadratic plate or wall with a circular opening where loads are applied at the top uh, and the whole structure supported here at the bottom. It could be, for example, a detail from a steel structure where you have an opening for a bolt, for example. The structure is uh, symmetric with respect to this vertical axis and this horizontal axis here. That's the reason why I concentrate on just one quarter to make the computation more efficient. And um, to get the correct result, I need to apply then uh, boundary conditions here and here. So that the original state of the forces in the structure is uh, kept. The, the model looks like this here. There are uniform loads applied at the top. These uh, loads are applied using dummy beam elements with a very small cross section. They are used uh, for applying here these uh, block loads, which is an option from the beam load component. The symmetry conditions here at the vertical line are such that uh, all translations in horizontal uh, in this uh, global x direction are blocked and movements out of plane. Supports here are in vertical direction, out of plane, and there is a support against rotations about the out of plane axis. The reason for this is that um, shell elements in Karamba do not have a drilling stiffness and in case of a completely flat uh, shell one needs to block the rotation about uh, the normal direction in at least one node otherwise one gets a rigid body mode in the structure. I calculate the structure using default material and shell thickness and the result can be seen here. So I have to disable the preview to get um, better colors. Um, what you can see here are the so-called first principal stresses this would be the second principal stresses. So there's the stresses in each point, which are the most tensile ones. And one already sees that um, in the vicinity of the hole, we get stress or ten concentration of tensile um, stresses. Or here the utilization. I again, see that there is tension here and there is uh, increased compression. To get a better impression about what's happening in the structure, one can uh, visualize the so-called force flow. For this, I use um, the so-called line results on shell component, which can be found here. Via the drop-down menu, one has uh, several options for creating those results lines. And the first option is called force flow. In order to get something out of this component, one needs to supply here a model, which is uh, 
with calculation results. One could specify also a load case and a position within the cross section of the of the shell. But in this uh, case here, we have uh, a uniform uh, distribution of stresses through the thickness. So I don't uh, specify anything here. One needs to set a force, at least one force flow direction, the direction in which the force flow shall be calculated. Um, in this case, it's easy because the force, forces flow from top to bottom. And that's the reason why I supply here a direction which points downwards, as can be seen here. And um, since uh, I can prescribe here multiple directions, um, I can also set corresponding positions so that the force flow direction for a given point is chosen according to the force flow direction specified in the vicinity of that point. Then um, in order to draw the force flow lines, I need to specify source points from where those lines uh, start. And uh, by default here, I use the points here at the top and the result looks like this here. One uh, sees how the force flow down, flows downwards. Um, so it's an intuitive way of grasping how the, the structure works. The theory behind it is um, not very tricky, actually. Um, you may know flow lines from hydrodynamics. This here is a photograph of a cylinder. We have here a flow around the cylinder. And um, here, if one looks closely, one sees that the lines uh, converge towards each other, which is a signal for increased speed. And here in the leeward direction here, we have um, tension in the fluid, which causes instability and then these uh, kind of whirls. The basis on which force flow lines can be calculated for a given fluid is the so-called continuity condition. In case you have an, an incompressible fluid, um, which, um, yeah. which flows uh, in a certain uh, volume, the condition, the continuity uh, condition means that the amount of mass which enters a given volume per unit of time must be the same amount of mass that leaves the volume at a given, uh, for a given amount of time. Um, so this means that fluid velocity times the cross section on one end of such a flow tube is the same as area times velocity on the other side. So um, this means that in case of increasing speed of the particles of the fluid, the flow lines need to converge. And this uh, achieves this uh, very intuitive uh, uh, flow lines from which it is easy to see what's happening inside the fluid. For force flow, it's uh, a little bit more complicated since there is not one continuity equation, but actually three. And the, the place of the continuity equation is, uh, of the continuity condition is taken by equilibrium conditions in three directions in case of three dimensional space. Um, this uh, rectangle here symbolizes the uh, volume from before. We have stresses acting on the sides of this volume, normal stress, shear stresses, 
And from these stresses, um, which all act in a given direction, which is the force flow direction, the force flow vector can be computed um, by simply uh, calculating here this angle between the shear stresses and the normal stresses. And the effect of this is that um, if there are two force flow lines for a given direction, that the resultant force at one side is the same but opposite on the other side, which means there's equilibrium in the given force flow direction. In case of the this, this structure here, um, one can see that um, here in this region the, there are no uh, force flow lines. The reason is that here um, we have the equivalent of a whirl. If I add here some points as source points, this can be seen. So in areas uh, where the material doesn't contribute to the load bearing behavior of the structure, we have this, uh, these whirls here, which could be actually used to optimize the placement of material. So there could be, for example, a hole here. As I've said, the force flow direction is essential for calculating this, uh, these force flow lines. So if I now change the direction of the force flow, like this, I can see now that the lines start to change. And this means actually that uh, for a flow, force flow in this, uh, force flow lines with respect to this direction, uh, this whole material doesn't uh, uh, contribute much. It's uh, logic because the flow, the, the forces uh, act in vertical direction, so there's not much uh, happening here in um, horizontal direction. So this would be the, the extreme here. The results one gets from these force flow lines can be used, for example, for placing rips or in some situations for placing reinforcement. Because the nice thing is that um, if one adds up the stresses or the distributed um, forces between two force flow lines, that they are constant with respect to, the, to this uh, direction here. So the rips would more or less be of the uh, same uh, cross section. Let's see um, how this distribution of force flow lines is also noticeable when displaying sections through the, the wall here. So in this case, it's a horizontal direction. And I display here now the distributed normal forces in the tangential direction. So we have here, for example, uh, compressive distributed normal forces in horizontal direction and in normal direction to the section line we have uh, a uniform distribution of normal distributed forces and as I approach now the hole one sees that the that uh, normal forces get less and less. That's because of the free edge here at the hole and that we have here increasing tensile normal forces at the opening, which might be, for example, uh, sources for uh, a crack. And if I go all the way down, One can see also here the concentration of distributed normal forces in vertical direction. If I switch on now the numbers, 
can see that the value here is yeah, around 33, 38, whereas here in the more undisturbed regions it's 10, which means that the stress concentration factor around this hole here is th approximately 3, which is also the value which one uh, gets from literature. The nice thing about these uh, flow lines here is that um, they lie exactly on the, on the mesh. And um, for each source point, one gets one uh, branch here in this resulting data tree. And um, these uh, line segments can actually be joined together. You can use the force flow lines as sections for this uh, section component and in this way see what's happening here along the force flow lines and again one gets here an increase that's again the normal force in tangential and normal direction And one can visualize now how they, they change here. Or one can also take, of course, all of the lines, which also gives a good impression of uh, what's happening around this uh, hole in the structure and how it impacts the distribution of the normal forces in this uh, plate here. Thank you very much for your attention. That's it. Goodbye.